If you've been wondering how to add score lines and perforation lines to your SVGs, then I'm gonna teach you today. Hi, my name is Kelsey. I also call myself Dinosaur Mama. And today we're gonna to go through the steps in Inkscape so that we can add score lines and perforation lines to our SVG files. Let's get started. If you need to catch up on some Inkscape tutorials, please check out my Inkscape 101 playlist before continuing on. We are going to grab a rectangle, but you can grab any shape you want because this is just a backing. We're going to be attaching our score lines and our perforation lines onto this shape. So I'm just grabbing any shape and changing the color because again, it doesn't matter. But we are going to adjust the size to whatever you need it to be. And really we're focusing on just our score lines today. So again, <laughs> the shape can be whatever you want. Just think about the shape that you need the score line to go onto. You're gonna grab your Bezier tool and go to the straight line so no curves, anything like that. You could also use a pencil for this. And I'm just drawing a straight line. Now the fun part is you have a score line. And what this means is that you can't actually create a score line that you do not need to change within Cricut Design Space. Meaning from what I have done with my SVGs, over the past three years, I have never found a way where you upload an SVG into Cricut and it automatically detects a score line. So you have your stroke here. You do not need to change it into a path. You just need to leave it as a straight line and that's a score line. So we're gonna save our SVG file and we are going to upload it over into Cricut Design Space. From here, you'll see that score line and just change it to score with the drop down box. My suggestion is if you're selling your SVG files or if you're sending them to friends, give them instructions on how to do that. That is all I ever do for all of my SVG files that have score lines. And the reason I don't change it into a path is because once you make it into a path, it's going to double that line basically. It's going to make like a rectangle rather than just one single line. So if you keep it as a stroke rather than a path, it's going to give you a single line for your scoring stylus or your scoring wheel. I prefer my stylus always because I don't like to have to change out to my wheel. And of course, on my Explore, you can't uh, change it anyway. So here's the scoring stylus and there's our score line. It came out really good and it makes it easier to fold. And this is great for cards or 3D projects. Now, if you prefer perforation lines, which a lot of people do because you technically don't need to have the special tool for it, you can just use your blade. This is how you're gonna set up that perforation line. So here I have that same blank card file and I clicked on object, fill in stroke. And while I'm on my stroke line, I am going to change it to the different dashes. So stroke style, dashes, and then I'm going down. And I like these three that are spaced apart. You can choose whichever ones you want. Just remember your blade's gonna be cutting each line. So just keep in mind how often you want your blade cutting. So before we didn't want to change our stroke to a path, but for our perforation line, we do. So path, stroke to path while it's highlighted. And now you'll see there's like four little nodes and that's where your blade would be cutting. We don't want these four little spots. So we're gonna change our width to as small as we possibly can go. And I have found that it is 0 0.001. I wanna say I went one more zero. So let's zoom in on this. You'll see the nodes, they're kind of overlapping now at this point. So we can go back to our select and change our width one more time. I'm adding in a third zero and now it's 0 .0001 and those are basically overlapping. And you're probably thinking that there's nothing even there because really when you look at it from afar, there is nothing there. It doesn't look like there's anything there for you to see. I'm gonna switch back over to Create Design Space. As you can see, I tested this a few times and now I'm re-uploading it. You can't even see the lines that we just added and I'm uploading this to my canvas. You can see there's a line there and all of the perforation lines. And so it's already set to a basic cut. You do not need to change this to anything. It's just a basic cut, hit attach on the whole file. And then when you go to make it, you will see all those little cuts down the middle. And that is how you add a perforation line to your card. 
And I don't have the perforation tool, which is like a little wheel that you can add. And it'll, um, I think it only works with a maker, honestly. I don't have it. And now I realize I don't need it. And so you see here, my blade is just going up and down and cutting each of those perforation lines. And so this is an awesome option to add instead of a score line. I also suggest for perforation lines not to go all the way to the edge, but that's a preference. You don't have to listen to me for that. Um, but as you see, it goes up and down. It cuts each line individually. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so you can see all of these little individual perforation lines. It worked really, really well. I was actually kind of surprised. I wasn't sure if I, I, it's not that I'm surprised. It's just that I've tried to do this for so long and couldn't figure it out. And then it finally just like clicked on me today on how to do it. And it worked so beautifully. And so I'll probably start adding this to a lot of my 3D designs because now you can use this without having to have that scoring stylus and they fold really, really cleanly and beautifully. Thank you for joining me today on our Inkscape tutorial to add score lines and perforation lines. If you haven't already and you learned something today, please don't forget to give this a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to continue on your SVG journey with me. Stay crafty!